Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Within Warzone right now, there are a few specific things that we've seen change since launch when it comes to your controller settings. For the most part, the vast majority of players on Warzone right now are controller players inherently because it's just an easier input, right? Aim assist, super cheesy, super strong. And so a lot of players are on controller. And today I wanted to break down the new best controller settings you want to be using here to just overall optimize your gameplay, make things more fluid and more seamless as well. So as we go through all the settings, if you enjoy the video or if you find it helpful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. It is always seriously appreciated. Much love to everyone who takes the time to do so. And if you're new to the channel or you simply have not subscribed, yet every single day i'm your one-stop shop for news updates gameplay breakdowns meta breakdowns it's all right here so feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications so within the actual settings themselves we obviously have three different categories general controller settings aiming settings and gameplay settings and there's some very important things you want to take note of across the board so obviously uh for your aiming input device you probably want to have it set as controller as far as your button layout goes truly there is a lot of preference involved in this there's no true best for some players you might prefer to have it as like a more standard layout if you play claw if you have a scuff controller you know using something like tactical could be super useful so you can use your back buttons to do basic things like jumping or uh you know meleeing whatever the case may be then you have your thumbstick to drop shot that's personally how i have mine set up but you could go through and readjust these manually and change the keybinds to do whatever you want and that's what i'd suggest is like the best way to go about it you know if you want your melee button to be a certain uh you know option go ahead and change it to whatever button you want that to be and you can change it any of these which is super convenient so that's truly the most efficient way to go about it if you're not a fan of just the basic presets now personally bumper ping not really doing it for me and i don't like flipping my bumpers and my triggers just because i have digital tap as is so it feels very natural to leave it as default some players though like to flip this and that's definitely a preference thing there stick layout i always leave on default i don't want inverted or anything like that controller vibration you don't want to have this on just in general it's cool for immersion and it's nice to have that like cool effect if you're shooting and it's like okay yeah this is pretty realistic feeling but from a competitive standpoint it's just not worth it you don't want your controller shaking and vibrating when you're trying to be super precise with your aim uh same deal with trigger effects if you have like a ps5 controller and you can have the haptics you don't want this on it's not going to be good for competitive gameplay dead zones please 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 pay attention this is very important there is no such thing as a best dead zone setting. It is entirely specific to your controllers. So mine's going to be completely different from yours. Yours will be completely different from the next person and the next person and the next person. But the updates that they did for this is actually really cool with an MW3 in Warzone because you can simply test. You can see that right now as I'm not touching my controller and the test is on, it says I have no input being detected. And if you move your sticks around after the fact, it should always come back to zero. If you turn this off and you change it to, uh, let's say, zero on your left, Left stick minimum and your right stick minimum and then you put the test on you'll see already my right stick has some input being detected even though i'm not touching it and same deal if you move your sticks around it should come back to zero but it doesn't my left obviously has input now as well so for that you just want to uh, take these numbers and increase them and change them to something higher than what the actual input numbers were reading there three and seven works for me but like i said that's going to be different for everyone what's not different for everyone is changing your left trigger and your right trigger dead zones to zero this means that the second Second you reach the actuation point your gun's gonna start firing so for like semi-auto guns or snipers and stuff like this that's super super convenient for making sure you get the shot off as fast as possible so definitely change those to zero then we get into the aiming stuff and there's a lot of things here that i've sort of adjusted since launch as well initially with sensitivity a big thing that people are talking about is this advanced horizontal stick sensitivity that you can see is locked and says it's 120 in the background but there's been a lot of testing there's been a lot of rumors initially saying that this is why your aim doesn't feel precise or sometimes can be thrown off in this game but it's been proven through other tests that that's just not the case if you were to go in and make it so that you could actually customize this and turn it down to one it's not making an actual change here so that's just placebo all that matters here is your base horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity personally i like to play staggered here just because i'm moving more horizontally than i am vertically so i don't need to have as high of a sensitivity vertically as i do horizontally if that makes any sense and i like to keep it in a nice middle ground eight seven works for me sometimes i play on nine eight if i'm feeling a little fancy you know but that nice middle ground there you don't want this too low because then you're not going to be able to track players who are close and slide canceling and moving fast and on the inverse you don't want this too high otherwise you won't be super accurate over long 
long range either so something in the middle is what you want to focus on there my sensitivity multipliers I leave these all at one just because it's just going to be consistent as you're going between third person the vehicles and everything like that vertical aim access we're not touching anything here that's definitely preference based I'm not a fan of uh you know going through and changing any of that uh tactical stance sensitivity multiplier I like to keep on one again just for the consistency if you switch into tack stance and you're aiming you don't want this to be like drastically different from what you were doing when you're aiming down sights aim response curve type this is a big one dynamic is what you basically want to be using for the most snappy and true feel there linear is also a good choice but you'll notice that the vast majority of the best players in the world are on dynamic and it's been that case for several years so no real changes there ADS sense multiplier focus I keep on just one the transition time timing of your ADS sensitivity though I keep on instant that way the second I go to ADS I'm getting the uh custom sensitivities that I have set up and this is something I would absolutely recommend doing this is going to make a big difference in your aim and make you a lot more accurate so I actually stagger all of these I go for a lower aiming sensitivity on some of my low zoom optics and I gradually increase that over time for the high zoom so like for sniper scopes and whatnot I'm on a true one sensitivity but for you know a three times optic I'm on a 0.85 for a low zoom I'm on a 0.83 I got that by manually typing that in by the way just plugging in keyboard and mouse you can type in whatever values you want but this makes it so that when I do ADS I'm going to be even more precise and that just helps so much with staying on target whether you're fighting close range or long range that's a clutch one there obviously you want to have aim assist on for aim response type here black ops still is going to be the most broken in the sense that this is where the most rotational aim assist is picked up a lot of people go back and forth between default and black ops and each of those are good but based off all the data that we have black ops is where the rotational aim assist feels the strongest and correction type I just keep on basic assist there that's not really too important motion sensor aiming this is like the gyro aiming and that's for very specific cases of people wanting to use that it is a cool thing for sure and some players could be really good at it but most players just want to leave this on off that's not really going to be too relevant there we then get into the gameplay settings and again there's some important things here that have changed since launch as well obviously you want to have automatic tax sprint on for one saving your thumbsticks you're not mashing those and destroying those but two obviously with slide canceling coming back and tax sprint automatically refreshing via sprinting having this on means that you'll be tax sprinting as often as possible when you're not manually stopping it obviously we know there's the stamina bar refresh in this game now when you slide cancel in the slide motion it's paused there's other things that can pause it so when you actually are are able to tax sprint you'll always do that automatically this is one that was actually updated post launch with a hot fix this setting basically used to be slide cancel sprint and you didn't want to have that on and now they've changed it to obviously slide maintain sprint and turning this on basically means that you're not going to get nearly as many dead slides or awkward uh, situations where you're trying to slide cancel so definitely 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 turn that one on auto move forward I don't want that on single tap sprint for tax sprint behavior really only applies if you don't have automatic tax sprint on but like I said for the sake of your thumbsticks you probably want to have that on there grounded mantle I keep on off because I just don't want to be randomly mantling things mid gunfight this happened a lot back in warzone one so I keep that off I keep the airborne automatic mantle as partial so I can choose when I'm basically going to mantle something there and then automatic mantle hang I do not want on because ledge hanging is by far the most annoying mechanic in the game I don't really think it needs to be in the game uh but this will stop you from doing it in some awkward situations slide and dive behavior is one that I'm really back and forth on personally I want the snappiest possible slide cancel I could get I want to be able to press my thumbstick and immediately be in that slide animation so that I'm not getting any dead slides any awkward uh you know situations there and if you have slide only on you do not have the option to dolphin dive now there is a weird glitch where you'll randomly dolphin dive at times and I still can't figure out what causes it but that's something that happens for everyone even if you have slide only on but if you have tap to slide on and you'd be able to hold it to dolphin dive this means that every time you're actually going to slide and you tap your thumbstick in or whatever your uh you know dive and uh slide button is there's going to be just a slight delay so that the controller waits to see if you are actually tapping the button or holding it and that to me after playing slide only is just a super super obnoxious feature so I'm currently keeping this on slide only the devs have said they're working on a way to input different keybinds for sliding and diving which will be super clutch but for the most pristine and smooth slide canceling slide only is probably the better option here unfortunately you don't get the dolphin dive momentum though when you're trying to like dolphin dive into parachutes there 
uh plunging underwater i keep on trigger parachute auto deploy you definitely want this on off so you can get as close to the ground as possible before pulling your chute this means you'll get to the loot faster you can fry enemies out of the sky better there i don't want to manually open doors so i've got sprinting door bash on ledge climb behavior i have is mantle only obviously uh ledge climbing in general kind of awkward in certain cases depending on where you're at on the map ADS behavior hold changing the zoom for me is going to be my uh focus button my sprint button so uh that's more of like a personal preference thing if you want to change that to uh, melee feel free to do so equipment behavior I have on hold pretty standard there my weapon mounts ADS and melee because I'll never accidentally do that but you can change this to whatever you want or you can turn it off if you don't want to mount but I wouldn't suggest that because mounting reduces recoil like crazy as we know and the exit delay I have on short for tax stance I have this on ADS plus my down on the d-pad that way again I'm never going to act accidentally do this in a fight you know ads and sprint i might accidentally do it ads and melee i shouldn't accidentally do it but it's possible i'm never pressing down on the d-pad there so i'll only do that intentionally so uh that to me is something i would recommend there and then i have that on toggle so that if i press it once i'll be in that until i uh press it again for interact and reload behavior prioritize interact is going to be the way to go here tap to interact could be decent as well if you just want to always hold to reload but I like being able to quickly reload in situations where uh there's nothing around me but I still obviously want to just tap once to open up a chest or you know a loot cache go into the menus whatever the case may be take a zip line I don't want to be holding there that's going to slow down your gameplay there's no reason to have prioritize reload or tap to reload on uh you never want to be holding to interact with anything in the world armor plate behavior you want this on apply all you only have to press your armor button once and you can always interrupt this by yying or sprinting or doing anything like that in certain cases not changing my ads stick swap i keep it as directional buttons for the backpack control i don't like my weapons auto switching when i run out of ammo but that's more of a preference thing there the c4 detonation one by one is definitely the way to go here because you can throw your first c4 and then blow it up right away if you have this on groups you have to throw all the c4 in your inventory which is just not convenient you don't want to be forced to throw two uh, if you only need one to you know break armor or to knock an enemy there manual fire behavior is something that you don't want to have on hold because truly this will hurt gameplay more this is only intended for semi-auto guns and it makes it so that you don't have to keep pressing your trigger over and over and over again you can just hold it but what it does is it makes the fire rate way slower actually on the semi-auto guns and that's not ideal whatsoever so keep that one on press and then vehicle behavior here doesn't really matter too much and same deal with the overlay behavior as well and that being said those are the best controller settings in the newly updated controller settings you want to be using here in warzone for the most smooth and seamless gameplay possible if the video helped you out or you simply enjoyed it do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel you want to guarantee that every single day you are up to date with all things going on in cod be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you later peace out